Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. Father in heaven, we thank you for a beautiful day. We thank you for the clear air here in Kona, and we thank you for that beautiful place. Uh, that we've given us to gather together to worship you. And now, Lord, as we open your word, we pray that you use Pastor Izzy to speak to each one of us, Lord, to encourage us. Lord, we need encouragement. Mm -hmm. And we pray, Lord, that you do that now, Lord. Have your way with us. You are the creator. You are the, the potter, Lord. Let us be clay in your hands. We ask that now in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. Amen. Well, guys, would you turn in your Bibles to 1 Corinthians 16 one more time as we finish... Finish off the, well, maybe finish, I should probably, the, the book of 1 Corinthians. Don't tell Sean this stuff already. We're just, well, go to verse 13, 1 Corinthians 16, verse 13. We, we uh, got here last week, I told you we were picking up with this verse. Paul's ending words to the church at Corinth. Now, for those of you that haven't been with us studying the book of, of, of Corinthians, just to give you a quick uh, recap, the, the believers in Corinth lived in, a, in an area of that time of the world that was um, kind of like the Las Vegas of the ancient world. Corinth was uh, one of those kind of like the port city where the sailors come and blow their paycheck. And um, the commerce was very um, big. You know, they had a lot of uh, influence from people coming and going. But with that, you also had a lot of influences of other cultures and and it was not I mean if you called someone a Corinthian in that day it was like a real knock it was like saying you're you're a moralist person you're a person that you know you're probably a liar a cheater a stealer a, you know um, immoral in all sorts of uh, of sexual ways you're, you're you're probably very loose in your in in, in your living and it wasn't a compliment just C contrary to what some people might think, that is not a compliment. So, so to co be called a Corinthian was, uh, was not a great thing. And yet God put this small group of believers in this place, Corinth, with Paul the Apostle. Being there on his second missionary journey, he preached the gospel. The word of the Lord abounded in Corinth. It was um, it's a place where they brought their, their magical books of, of soothsaying and... and burnt them they just you know the lord did a mighty work and and it's amazing that uh, you know i pointed this out before but when you're in a in an area where it's spiritually dark even if you have just a little bit of light just a little you know i use the example on my key ring there's a little one of those little teeny lights um you know to see the key for the sticking the key in the corridor even that much light when it's really dark it's it, I have found, isn't it amazing how just a little bit of light can be so handy when you're in the dark to see your way around it? And here, God has placed these believers to be a light. And Paul, he's got some final words to tell them that I think is w some of the words actually our culture needs today for the, for the believers. Just as much as they needed to hear this back then, this word is applicable to us today. If you look at verse 13 with me, it says, Paul tells them, be on the alert. Stand firm, he says, in, in the faith. And act like men. Be strong. And then he says in verse 14, And let all that you do be done in love. Now this is a thing that is kind of hard to preach in our culture because we have people that are, you know, they get offended if you tell men, man up, be a man, you know. Like, uh, how many of you men my age can remember being told to be, you know, Hey, man up! Quit being like you know, wimp. Don't, don't. That's not, that's not becoming of a, of a young man. Any of you ever hear lines like that? Besides me, I know I heard all the time. My, my father was like, you know, y you're a man. You don't cry about that. Men don't cry about that stuff. We, we do something about it. You know, fix it, man. And I can't help but listen to Paul and just think, you know, here he is, pastored this church. He founded the church. And what's he got to end with telling them at the end of the, of the letter? Man up. Come on, men. 
There's nothing worse than a bunch of Christian men that are Christian wimps. They really don't do the body of Christ any service. We're supposed to be, now what did he say be strong in? Stand firm in? In faith. We're supposed to be men that are, are strong, sound in our faith. When people look at us, they go, man, that guy has faith. I mean, everything can be going wrong. He still holds on to the Lord. He still is like, it's okay, I got the Lord. I got faith that the Lord's got this in control. And, you know, guys, you can, so many guys are like, well, you don't know what my home life's like. You don't know what my wife's like. You know, I, I don't, actually, I never really deal with it. I just go straight to the guy. If I can get the guy to do the right thing in the Lord, to be the man of his house, to be the, like the scripture says, the priest. Men, I hope you know this. You're called to be the priest of your own home. In other words, you're supposed to lead spiritually by example, right? We're supposed to like set the pace. We walk after the Lord. And by the way, for the gals, does this help out at all? For you gals, if the guy is actually a man that is strong in his faith and stands firm in his faith, and, you know, when all the storms of life come, he's just going, it's okay, I got it. Standing firm in faith. I got, the Lord's got us. You know, for, listen, guys, if you want to help bless your wife, you need to learn to do this. This is so important. And, and I think, honestly, I think a lot of marriages can be so quickly strengthened if I just get, if I could just spiritually gib slap the guys in the back of the head, tack, wake up. Straighten up. Be a, man, be a man of faith. Stand firm in your faith. Quit. quit. Now, now, what's the option? What's the option to standing firm in faith? What, being all noodly legged You know? All wussy about being in the faith? You've got to be a man about your faith. Have a firm stance in your faith. And by the way, that's when the women feel like, all right, I can follow that guy. Because he's strong in his faith. Even if stuff's going on, he still has his faith in the Lord. It's really important, men, that we be men of faith. Especially for our wives. And for you single guys, you're going, oh, I got out of this one. No, you didn't. Okay. Don't worry. When your future bride comes and the Lord brings her, she's going to want you to be strong, standing firm in your faith too. So start doing it now. Start being strong in your faith. And don't forget the next verse. Because this is, you know, it's, a, it's a, almost a disservice that we have the Bible broken up verse by verse with little numbers in front. Because some people actually just pick and choose one verse and pluck it out and stop with that. I've heard whole sermons preach on one verse and I'm like, but you forgot the next verse. Because the next verse says that whatever you do, let all that you do be done in what? In love. Now, there are some guys that are really strong and firm, but they're not loving. You ever run into those fellows? Oh, yeah, they're, they're strong, they're firm, but they don't have love. It, it, you might recall what Paul said about that back in chapter 13. If you, have, if you have all the knowledge to know all mysteries, if you can prophesy all things, if you have enough faith to say to that mountain, get up, be moved into this. Don't do that, by the way. We want to keep the mountain there. But... <laughs> If you, if you had the faith to command the mountain to move and it would obey you, you're a spiritual giant of a man. But the Bible says, but if you don't have love, what did Paul say? You're nothing. You're a noisy gong, a clanging cymbal. You're a stinking noisemaker. That's all you are if you try to do anything, even spiritual things, without love. You ever seen, I mean... We've been serving the homeless in, 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 in our community breakfast for, I don't know how long we've been doing this, 20 plus years, say. Okay, a long time. And, uh, you know, we always welcome people who say, hey, I'd like to help, you know, in the serving of the food. Sure, here. You put them behind one of the, the dishes, you know, here, you, you serve the casserole or you serve the rice, you serve whatever. And, and when you're serving... There was a season when we had these Korean believers that joined us from YWAM. <coughs> Remember Joe, Pastor Joe, and this whole contingent Korean, con Korean contingent that showed up for church. And they would come like early and start praying. And then their English, not so good. 
But when they went to serve the food, they would serve the food with such love. They would be like giving the food in love, just here. Jesus loves you. And they, 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 I mean, and the way they did it, I mean, it just puts a shame. So, Because I had some helpers that go, yeah, I'll help. And they're like, here, take that. <laughs> you know, stupid. I hate doing this, you know. That race won't come off the paddle. <laughs> you know, and they're, they're I'm like, that isn't working for God. He's not really interested in your service if you're not doing it in love. It says, let all that you do be done in love. Not just a few things, everything. And there's not, it doesn't make for a good, strong man of faith that's standing firm in his faith, that is being a man for the Lord, to be a man without love. I remember years back there was these t-shirts that came out, real men love Jesus. You know? And on the back, some of them put, and others. I was like, that's a good shirt. Because what's the greatest command when Jesus was tested by the Pharisee? He said, first thing, love God. All your heart, all your mind, all your soul, and all your strength. And the second is like unto the first, love your what? Your neighbor as yourself. You got to have love. So Paul, in wrapping up the letter to the church at Corinth, he's got to, it's a strong word. But see, he can, he can tell these guys because he led probably a lot of them to the Lord. He taught a lot of them about the Lord. He spent time helping them to grow in their knowledge of the scriptures. But some reason, he has to throw this in at the end. You got to act with love. You've got to. Don't forget this. Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, AmazingGraceKona.com and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com Mahalo and God bless.